Amos was not what you would call a professional prophet. In fact, the one time somebody called him that, he corrected him. I'm not a prophet or the son of a prophet, he said. I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. He came from the town of Tekoa, just a few miles south of Bethlehem. He spent his days following his sheep from one little green patch to another and up on a ladder, piercing sycamore figs to make them ripen more quickly. It was hard work, the kind of work that was done only by the poorest of the poor. And so if you have held in your mind a mental image of Amos riding up to Samaria in a stretch limousine to have a private audience with the king of Israel, you can just get over it. He probably walked those 50 miles wearing a pair of dusty sandals with a bag slung over his shoulder. And when he got there, all he could do was stand on the street corner and preach. He wasn't a professional, but he sure did know how to draw a crowd. Thus says the Lord, he began, for three great sins of Damascus, make that four. I'm not putting up with her any longer. And the people who were walking by stopped to listen. Because Damascus was the capital of Syria, their neighbor to the northeast, and a perennial threat to their safety and well-being. The idea that God was going to do away with Syria forever was good news indeed. But Amos wasn't finished yet. Thus says the Lord, he thundered, for three great sins of Gaza, make that four. I'm not putting up with her any longer either. And that really got the people's attention. Gaza, as you know, was their neighbor to the south and west. It was the land of the Philistines. The idea that God was going to do away with Gaza forever, that was good news. But Amos wasn't finished yet. He pronounced God's judgment on Tyre and Edom and Ammon, their neighbors in the south and east and north, judgment on Moab and Judah, their nearest and largest neighbors. He talked about God banishing their kings and burning their capital cities and raining down destruction on all the surrounding nations. It was as if Amos had set up a, a mortar in the middle of town and cranked the handles and adjusted the knobs and taken aim on these neighboring nations before dropping a shell down into the muzzle and letting it go. People stood and marveled at what he was saying about God's judgment coming on these enemies of theirs. They must have clapped and cheered and begged for more every time he pronounced judgment on another country. But then Amos turned the handles and cranks of that mortar until the muzzle was pointing straight up. And then he got a shell and began to drop it into the barrel and everybody said, no, 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 no. If you do that, it will go straight up and come straight down on us. And that's when Amos looked them in the eye and said, for three great sins of Israel, make that four. I'm not putting up with her any longer. And as the people stood there horrified, they heard Amos pronounce judgment on their own nation. He condemned the men of Israel for the way they sold the needy for a pair of sandals and trampled the head of the poor into the dust. He called the women of Samaria cows who oppressed the poor, who crushed the needy, who lay on their ivory couches and said to their husbands, bring that we may drink. He said that in the same way a shepherd might rescue two legs or a piece of an ear from the mouth of a lion, so the people of Israel would be rescued with the corner of a couch or a piece of a bed. That's when Amaziah, the priest, the religious official in Samaria, spoke up. He said, <clears throat> Amos, go back to Judah and earn your bread there, but don't ever prophesy at Bethel again, for it is the king's sanctuary and a temple 
of the kingdom. And that's when Amos gave his famous reply, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son. I'm a herdsman. I'm a dresser of sycamore trees. The Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. And that's just what I'm doing. And then he gave this prophecy. From chapter 8, verses 1 through 12, our reading for today. Follow along if you like as I read from the New Revised Standard Version. This is what the Lord God showed me, Amos says. A basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. And so, while we still have it with grateful hearts, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 